Hi, let me walk you through this conversational rag example using Verb. Uh, so in this notebook, you'll find it in the examples folder. So you'll be able to uh, recreate this follow along. So I'm going to walk through some code of the setup of this example, say how it works, and then walk through a few of the features that Burr has, uh, one of them being uh, tracking to telemetry, but the other is also being able to uh, rewind state or replay uh, uh, from a particular point in time. So let's get started. So in this in this notebook, we I have this top level section just importing uh, uh, modules. Um, and then uh, I am instantiating a conversational rag pipeline. Uh, this is using Hamilton, uh, but this could be you know Langchain, your common, whatever, your, your own custom code to do this. Uh, the main point of this is that uh, it takes in uh, some prompt, a vector store, and then uh, uh, hits an LLM to get a response. Uh, if you're using Hamilton, you can always display this. And so this is kind of what this uh, visualization is here. Uh, but suffice to say, the thing to note is like, uh, it takes in a question, uh, some chat history, uh, a vector store, um, and then uh, uh, then uh, it fits it all into a context, then adds uh, to a response. Um, uh, so this is pretty straightforward, but you know, in terms of building a conversational bot, like we're going to be wanting to run this uh, this particular you know pipeline over and over. Uh, and so this is what we're going to use Burr for. Burr is going to manage the state of say of the conversation and therefore of scheduling and kind of you know running this pipeline code. So how do we do that? So with Burr, the idea is that uh, you write actions uh, that can do something. Um, and so there is a functional and a class-based approach to declaring them. Here, I'm just going to go show you the functional. So what I mean by functional is that uh, you write a function that constitutes an action. So AI converse here is one of these actions because we've annotated it with um, uh, a, a, an action uh, decorator. Uh, one of the th key things to note about uh, Burr is that actions talk to each other through state. And so every action has to take in a state object. Uh, we have to be also explicit to say what we read and write from it. Uh, that's part of uh, well, how Burr tries to get you to ensure that you know things are working and operating um, properly. Uh, the functions can take in other arguments. So these can be satisfied at input time, or they can be kind of bound later, which will kind of uh, uh, I'll show in a bit, which is how this example works. But effectively, AI converse takes in some state, right? Uh, so the state uh, will be uh, question history, question and chat history, uh, and then the output of the uh, the action is that we'll then write more to chat history. Uh, it also takes in a vector store. This will be our knowledge base that we could you know will then use for for rag purposes. In terms of you know how to use it in a pipeline, because uh, this pipeline uh, is set up to build build a vector store in memory if you don't have one. Uh, instead, we want to uh, don't want to have to recompute that, and, uh, um, and so in which case we uh, just override it um, um, uh, with a, a pre-built vector store. And that's kind of what we're doing here. But other than that, uh, we're executing it. This will get a result, and then we're adding uh, this new history uh, to to state, uh, and they've been then also returning uh, a a dictionary, which is uh, a the result of kind of what things ran. We then uh, our next action then is the human converse. Uh, step. So this is uh, an action where we want to get input or use a question from user to then you know, continue the conversation along. This action is pretty basic. All it's doing is uh, updating state uh, and then uh, in, in terms of you know the question, but then also uh, the chat history. Uh, uh, and then, yeah, pretty, pretty simple. To build the application, we're going to take these two actions and then kind of you know uh, say, <laughs> how they transition between them, but then also uh, we're going to tell Burr uh, a few things. So um, as I mentioned earlier, there is a little bit of you know, a vector store that needs to be populated. So this is what this initial setup is doing. Uh, this is nonsensical stuff, but you know it's pretty basic. Um, and it's using, um, under the hood, it's, it's using Langchain's FAISS, if I'm not mistaken, a kind of vector uh, in memory vector store implementation. Uh, we're initializing some state. And so the magic of building the Burr application actually happens here. Uh, we use the application builder, and then we've got to specify what these actions are. Uh, you'll notice here that in AR Converse, I'm actually binding the, the vector store to the function. Uh, this means that it will, we don't have to pass this in. This will be the same, same value passed in, uh, or same ref, object reference passed in each time it's called. We're then uh, specifying there's a human Converse step, mapping it to the other action. And then we're also adding a, um, a terminal step. Uh, and, the other, and so, 
whenever the conversation changes, uh, needs to finish, we'll end up in this terminal step and we'll just kind of return uh, chat history. That set up the actions. Now we need to set up uh, the transitions. And so with transitions, you're effectively uh, creating uh, edges. Uh, and you're saying from a particular action to a particular action and then a condition. So from AI Converse in the simple setup, we are always uh, going to human converse. Um, uh, I can kind of, rather than explain that, I can kind of show you in the diagram below. So Hamil uh, Burr allows you to uh, visualize things easily. Uh, and so uh, human converse can then go to terminal. Um, and so if you say exit uh, in the question, uh, in the, if you say exit as part of the question, then uh, a very simple uh, thing to check for, but that, that's kind of you know, uh, what will then transition things to the terminal state and stop uh, the conversation. Else, the default is uh, human converse will then uh, go to AI converse, given that we uh, received a, a user question. There's a few other things uh, to set up the app. So one is we get to set up some identifiers. So like, you know, you can think of this as a trace ID, uh, also a partition key. So this could be, you know, the actual the user uh, ID of, of who this conversation is. Uh, we're initializing the state, um, setting the entry point, and then Burr comes with, uh, it's put for fully pluggable. So we can add in a bunch of hooks and one of these will be a print step hook. Uh, and then otherwise we can also track things. And so this is what uh, the, this track is doing, which is uh, then connected to, to the open source UI. Now, yeah. Uh, so there are a few ways to run a Burr application or to, to kind of step through this, this state machine effectively that we kind of created. Um, uh, and I'm gonna show you how you can kind of sequentially do it with step. Um, because we, uh, at the human converse tip, it requires input. Uh, that's why we need to kind of uh, ask, ask the user a question, uh, but then that's why we also need to pass it into the step. Um, and so if I just run this and say, who is set in English, um, we can see here that uh, we have now uh, ran the human converse step uh, because we've appended a chat history and we've added a question uh, to state. So then let's run uh, the, the next step, right? Since uh, we're at the AI converse step, it doesn't require any inputs. We didn't require any inputs there. And so you can kind of see here, um, uh, uh, this is now used the, the rag, uh, uh, used rag to provide context that then the LLM has provided a response for. So if you, if you look at this, you can kind of see this, this, this maps exactly to, to the knowledge um, kind of that we had uh, about Stefan. Okay, uh, and so that is obviously, you know, if you want to sequ sequentially do it, the more likely way that you're probably going to be doing it is uh, by, you know, having some sort of loop and looping around until, you know, some sort of, you know, terminal action or, or, or something happens. And so, uh, uh, but we require in, in, in terms of this application, right, each time we loop around, we need, we need user input. Uh, and so one way that you can kind of formulate this is uh, by using uh, the, uh, using run on application and then saying, when do you want to stop things? You want to stop before or after something. And so halt before, we want to halt before human converse because we need to get input. Uh, but then, you know, we want to halt after uh, terminal, right? Um, so that we can, you know, exit and, and, and stop things. And so if I uh, uh, run this, right? Um, uh, uh, and I can ask questions. So then we're. Um, we kind of see here that, oh, look. It, going through, um, uh, it, it looped around, now it's asking for more input. Who, uh, what's a good question? Uh, you know, who would like to, uh, uh, what is his favorite food? Um, uh, and you can kind of see, you know, things are happening, right? And so if I, um, uh, who, the best person for financial advice. Um, we can kind of, yeah, continue this conversation. And then when I want to uh, finish it, I just hit exit, right? Um, cool. So this, this is our bear application that's up and running. But, you know, one of the things that kind of happens is, you know, say that there's something funky or some response that happens that then we want to, you know, debug or, or, or dive deeper into because maybe uh, the code in our action or our rag pipeline, like, did something funky. Um, and so one of the things that Burr kind of makes easy is that we can actually reload from prior state. Um, uh, and so the, there's a few things or a few, there's two different approaches to, to kind of do that. 
um, uh, with Burr, if you uh, are using uh, the, the, the tracker, the tracker does have some state persistence, right? And so we set up a tracker here uh, with, with tracker. Uh, this is, uh, if you set that up there locally, it's a very easy way to go, go back in time and kind of debug things. So I'm just going to use that. But uh, Burr does have uh, persistors that allow you to you know, write to my uh, Postgres, Redis, or you know, SQLite. Um, and so effectively, you have to have turned something on to kind of save that state, right? Uh, that is the precursor. But then once you have it, there's um, two ways to kind of load it. So you can load out uh, the state um, uh, outside of Burr and then pass it in its initial state to go and debug something at some particular point in time. Or there is an initialize from method that will try to, you know, uh, try to provide better ergonomics. So, um, uh, and so uh, if you want to, if I wanted to pick up this conversation here where I just left off, right, initialize from would probably be the best method to kind of use. But if I wanted to debug and say fork uh, this particular uh, uh, thread, then, uh, you know, right now probably the easiest way to do that is probably um, uh, to handle initializing state outside of building the bare application. Uh, if this is all confusing, we do have a Discord channel. I'm more than happy to, to, to answer questions there. But I'm going to show you both ways. Um, and so the setup for, uh, you know, being able to rerun to a particular prior state is that we need to have this kind of app ID or, or trace ID. And so I should probably, yeah, you know, uh, print what that is. Um, right. And so, um, uh, and actually probably this is actually a good pause to probably go look at the very UI. Uh, and so I have uh, the, the Burr uh, uh, open source telemetry UI that you get uh, for using Burr. And so there is, you know, each, each kind of, uh, project reviews of the tracker kind of gets its own um, namespace. And so we're doing conversational rag. Um, I uh, know the app ID, so I definitely know that the um, uh, this is this is the one that I want. Um, and so what I've basically, what we've done with uh, what Burke gives you for free is that uh, you can see the entire conversation uh, as it played out um, uh, that I just did. Uh, at each point in time, we're actually tracking uh, the, the state, so you can kind of see the questions that I asked, uh, the different responses, and you know the chat history as it's kind of you know um, uh, growing over time. And then you know when exit was called, it then went to terminal. Uh, we also capture uh, the code, right? And so if you wanted to kind of easily debug and introspect that, you know you can at least get, get a glance to, to see here what it's doing. But the point is, um, you know, with the Burr UI, this, this telemetry. Uh, that you get, you know, it comes for free just by using uh, uh, the Burr framework. Now, how does this relate to state management? Well, um, uh, what I'm going to show you is that we can actually um, uh, say we want to uh, debug something about this conversation. The thing that I need to know is uh, the kind of the app ID or the uh, application kind of trace ID here. Uh, and so this is kind of what we're using. Uh, I then want to uh, go back uh, a couple of sequences. So, because I want to, you know, Rather than exiting, I want to go back and then you know uh, start with a, a new conversation or something, or, or, or debug that particular step. Uh, so you can kind of specify what sequence I need to rewind to, and that basically corresponds to one of these numbers on the left. Uh, and so we we are then the point of this is then we're you know creating this tracker object, providing the right details in the tracker object because everything is you know backed by by file system knows that given uh, uh, this, this kind of load command, so given the right partition key, so the user, the app ID and the sequence, it will uh, give me the state for that particular point of time. Uh, and so if I run this, uh, you can kind of see here uh, that this should correspond to the last step uh, here of um, uh, this particular conversation. Uh, so we now have loaded that back in. And so then to start our conversation or our, our forked kind of uh, thread of that is just a matter of then, uh, you know, passing in the state here um, uh, as our initial state, right? And so uh, we can then uh, uh, pick up or, you know, create a new conversation um, from, from where we left off. And so then if there's... Um, uh, yeah, something to debug or to do something. This is kind of what you do. Obviously, this is just an example. So just for illustrative purposes, you can kind of see, you know, I could continue. Um, uh, 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 yeah, so what should I do? And so uh, this particular example, um, uh, you know, 
understood or, and used the prior context, right? Knew that Elijah was the last person we we're kind of talking about, and then you know answered it correctly, obviously. So uh, that was just you know a cute little demo of showing you know that's one way that you can rewind and go back to state, right? Um, and so. Uh, if we go back to the uh, the Bur UI, you can kind of see here that um, uh, we actually, you know, reloaded things from this particular point in time, uh, and you can kind of see that we forked things, uh, but we didn't change the sequence number, so that way we can uh, more easily uh, see. Uh, so you could then, you know, go on your merry debugging way and and do what you want with it. Now, uh, let me show the the other way. Uh, so the other way to kind of load things, which is probably more useful if you, you know, wanted to you know, building an application and someone exits or something crashes and you want to pick it uh, up from where it lifts off, you're going to be using uh, the initial initialize from construct. Uh, what this construct needs, again, is some sort of um, thing that will load state. In this case, we're going to use the tracker. Uh, it will then subsume a few of uh, these builder kind of function calls. You don't, you set the default entry point in here in a default state so if there's nothing um so this 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 code will work if there is no prior state so it will, it will start things afresh um and that's that's really it so uh what this is going to do is we're actually going to you know uh pick up and add to the prior conversation uh that we had uh initially so when i run this uh it sets that up and so then uh when i run things here uh you'll see that it uh uh, this initial state that it loaded uh, again is is from where um, uh, uh, we were uh, prior, and so what we'll see though is that in the say the Bird telemetry UI, we'll actually see that uh, the uh, sequence numbers and uh, the context we've actually added to that uh, existing trace. Um, and so, what is what is a fun question? So, who should I Cool. Uh, and so if I go back to here and then uh, see, um, we have now, um, uh, my, things are still running, uh, but we can kind of see here that uh, I, have, we were at a terminal state, but now we've actually picked up the conversation again uh, and we are continuing uh, to do that. So that's all I kind of wanted to show you uh, with this example of walkthrough is A, how to build a conversational uh, you know, rag but using Burr to help manage state. And then importantly, I went through you know, two or th two important things. So one is uh, things that when you use Burr, you have this open source uh, telemetry UI where you can kind of go back in time and see in retrospect uh, to more easily kind of debug things. Uh, but then specifically on that, uh, it is easy then to reload state and rewind to a particular point in time. And I showed you oh, two methods of doing that. Thanks for listening. If you need help, do come join our Discord. And otherwise, we'd love a star on GitHub if you haven't given one to us already. Thanks.